All right, friends and neighbors, this morning's networking video, I thought we would spend a little more time focusing in on something that we've done in a lot of the videos, uh, but I haven't actually drilled down and talked about them specifically, and that is sub-interfaces and their close relative, the secondary IP address. So let's talk a little bit more about these, and then again, I'll do a, a short demo for you. Now, sub-interfaces are used on a router, or more specifically, a layer 3 interface. Now, it's often the case that you see sub-interfaces used when you don't have a lot of ports on the router. You're what we call port poor, and you're going to trunk up to a router so that you can uh, use the other interface to connect maybe externally or something like that. But there are a couple of reasons why you might want to have uh, multiple sub-interfaces on a particular interface beyond that. But essentially what we're talking about is a router interface or a routed interface, a layer 3 interface, that connects to a layer 2 infrastructure. And the, on the infrastructure, the layer 2 side, you're going to have a trunk. Okay, so why do you do this? Well, anytime you need a layer 3 interface. So the example that we've already talked about is... If I'm going to have a router with not a lot of ports and I want to use one of those ports to service a couple of VLANs. Now, it might be for servicing straight up default gateway, and that's perfectly acceptable, perfectly reasonable. But if you want layer three treatment or a unique layer three uh, parent interface for other reasons like policies, network address translation, something of that sort, that's another reason to use sub interfaces. Now, I've included the uh, the syntax on the bottom here, so you go to the interface, but you'll notice that instead of on the interface of just saying the physical interface itself, we're going to use the dot notation and then some value here. Now, the good engineering practice is to tie this value to whatever your VLAN ID is. So we're going to have an encapsulation statement here, dot one Q, I triple E, dot one Q. And then the VLAN itself. And then you'll give that sub-interface an IP address. So this means that the global interface or the parent interface does not have an IP address. And you can have multiple IP addresses on the same uh, physical interface, but they're tied to uh, different sub-interfaces. Okay, so that's the demo that we'll do. But before we go away from this, we'll talk about secondary IP addresses. Now, secondary IP addresses are similar to sub-interfaces, except... They're on the global or parent interface. So you go to the main interface and then you just say IP address something secondary. I'll show you the I'll show you the, the syntax for the command in Packet Tracer. You can't do it in Packet Tracer. It's not included since Packet Tracer is a simulation that doesn't include everything. Uh, but there we go. So that's two methods that you would put or that you could use to put a, an IP address or a second IP address, third IP address, and so on on an interface. Well, why would you do secondary IP addresses? Well, secondary IP addresses are a tool that you might use if you're not willing to trunk, right? You don't need to trunk, but you have multiple networks downstream that you might be handling with one physical interface. Now, there's a couple of scenarios that are sort of uh, bubble up to the top here. If you were merging or changing address space, so if you're doing some testing, right, so you're on one set of IP addresses and you want to move to another set of IP addresses, but you don't want to sever connections. So what you might do is bring up a secondary interface, start configuration, and then do some testing and then move to that as the primary. So that's one scenario. Another scenario might be that if you're merging topologies, right, so I've got two networks and I'm going to put them together and service them with one upper layer or layer three infrastructure. So that's a case where we would have multiple IP addresses or secondary IP addresses on the same physical interface. Now, unlike the sub interfaces, which serve as a source for the IP address and you, you communicate um, with that directly, all nodes in that subnet communicate with the sub interface directly. That's not the same thing here, all what we might call main traffic transmissions uh, come from the primary IP address, right? The other ones are absolutely just secondaries that just simply allow communication with their, their client. And I might go so far as to say today that we don't use secondary interfaces uh, or secondary IP addresses very often, though we do use sub-interfaces quite a bit. So let's, uh, let's take a look at Packet Tracer. 
Okay, so I've got a router and a switch here, and I'm just going to run one connection between the router and the switch. And we'll use the, uh, I like this. So all that we're going to need to do really to demonstrate how this works is we'll have a couple of PCs here. That's all. And we'll connect them to the switch, and maybe we'll do, and we'll do VLAN 2 and 3, and we'll just sort of keep everything straight. There we go. So on this PC, I might say, you will be talking to 192.168.2.254. Make sure I get my IP addresses right. And your IP address itself will be 2.1. There we go. And over here, we'll just use the, uh, the 3Net. Now the key difference between a sub interface and a secondary IP address is of course that we are trunking. And so the traffic to the router, this is going to be on a trunk line. And so maybe we'll label that as such. This also means that the port that we're gonna use here on the switch is going to be a trunk. So we can go ahead and configure that. So I'm going to say int, I think I did g0 slash 1. And I'm going to say switch port. Now, again, some routers would have, you would have to say switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1q. With this particular model of switch, it just says, it's all right to tell me that I'm going to be a trunk. And the reason that that's okay is because if I show, if I say show int g0 slash 1 switch port, Right, it already thinks that it's doing dot one q. Okay, well now on to our router, and we'll do the CLI just because that's what we like to work with. And I'm going to go to int. What was this interface? Well, we'll know here in a second. Oops. One uh, trick you can always use is if you go to an interface and turn it on. And you get the green uh, green lights. If I say no shut, then I know I'm working with the right interface. All right, so fast Ethernet uh, zero zero. Now, normally I could do this. I could say IP address, you know, something uh, ten zero 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 one, right? And then I would give the mask whatever it is. And now, if this was going to be a secondary. Now, so if it was primary, I would just do that. I would say enter. If it was going to be a secondary, then I would add the keyword secondary right here and so i would have the primary and then i could have a whole bunch of secondary ip addresses but as you can see here packet tracer does not let you do that so i'm not going to worry about that right now so let me show you from the get-go how this works so i'm going to go to int f0 slash zero but instead of zero slash zero and then enter i'm going to do dot two because maybe what i'll do is just because we're Running over here, we'll do that. There we go. All right. So now the dot two is going to be tied to VLAN two. And the way that we're going to do that is with, we're going to say encapsulation. Well, what trunking protocol are we going to use? Dot one Q, right? And we'll do that. I'll show you the question marks. Why not? So dot one Q here is our option. Other, the other trunking protocol really is ISL. And then what is the VLAN ID? And that, of course, will be two. Okay, now let's do an IP address. 192.168.2.254 and 255.255.255.0. Okay, now I'm going to do the same exact thing, but on the dot three, we'll give it an IP address of 3.254. Oh, well, let's, whoops, got a little crazy here. Let's do that. So specify the VLAN, and now we'll specify the IP address. If you do it the opposite way, it'll crab at you. So there we go. Now, let's do a show run just to review what we did. So here's our two sub interfaces. Okay, no IP address on the parent or the global interface. And then we've got these two sub-interfaces. 
And of course, this line is a trunk. Well, let's see if we have connectivity. And the first thing that we'll do is test just connectivity to the gateway. So ping 192.168.2.254. Of course, this will ARP timeout. Oh, you know, do you remember what I didn't do? I did not put them in their VLANs. You were supposed to tell me that. You were supposed to remind me of that. So we got all excited about the router, and we forgot to create the VLANs on the switch. So let's do that. Oops. I even put them in the right ports. Okay, so int of 0 slash 2, and I'm going to say switch port access VLAN 2. All right, so that immediately, oh, well, so we'll, the minute you change VLAN status, right, the ports go down, they come back up again. So while we're waiting, we'll do uh, port three. And there we go. And we'll just review what we did on the switch. Show uh, run. Right, so the ports are in VLAN two and three right there. And then all the way down here, we made this a trunk. Whoops. Now, I suppose while we're waiting for those to come up, We'll do uh, we'll do this. We'll do a show VLAN, and we can see that I created my VLAN two and three. And the other fun thing is that G zero slash one is missing from VLAN one, and that's because it's a trunk. Trunks are not part of any particular VLAN. All right. Well, let's try this again. Now that we've done it right, there we go. And we'll go for broke, and we'll say let's go to three dot one. And now we'll have a little ARP delay, and then we'll we'll go. There we are. Now, the other fun part about this is that when I ping from here to here, it does not go straight across. It goes up to the router and then comes right back down. Because both the default gateways are up there. Notice that I've, I've got one physical interface here. So let's go to our simulation, and we'll just we'll look at two things. We'll look at the tagging. And then we'll also look at the transmission pathway. So let's get rid of a couple of things here. And we'll do that same ping again. 3.1. Now we don't have to listen to the ARP traffic. So here we go. It goes up to the switch. The switch says, what VLAN are you on? Uh, where are you going? I happen to know the destination MAC address. It's your gateway. So it goes up to the router right back down, and then over to PC1, or 3.1 in this case. The response goes back on VLAN 3, back up here. Now, let's take a look at this transmission coming from 3.1, 192.168.3.1. Whoops. First of all, we can see right here, hopefully you can see this okay, the ether type is 8100. That indicates 802.1Q trunking encapsulation. And then we can see right here that I am tagged with VLAN 3. In the IP header, we can see that we're 3.1. Now, if we go back a little bit and we take a look at what actually came from PC3, it is not. 802.1Q, right? So the PC has no idea that this is happening, and this is standard uh, ether type for for IPv4, right? 0800, and here's 3.1 to 2.1 again. So if we step forward a little bit, and it's coming back down, this one's going to be going over towards 2.1, and now we see that it is still the 3.1 to 2.1 conversation right here and here. It is still tagged 8100, but the VLAN ID is now 2. And that's just showing us that it went up to the switch, connected to VLAN 3, got tagged across the trunk with VLAN 3, came back down from the other sub-interface, tagged as VLAN 2, over to VLAN 2, and then it'll finally get to its destination here. And again, it's untagged on that side. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's polish this off. All right, so we're just adding some networking techniques and maybe understanding sub-interfaces and secondary IP addresses a little bit better. Remember that sub-interfaces are 
connected to trunking. So it's a layer three interface that you're going to create sub interfaces on. And that's going to be trunked down to your layer two infrastructure. And everything will be trunked. We'll be using tagging and everything else to get between the VLANs. And the reasons that you might do that is that you want particular layer three servers to a particular VLAN or VLANs. The secondary IP addresses are a little bit different, right? We use those for different scenarios like merging or changing IP address structure maybe. But again, the secondary IP addresses are not used anywhere near as often as tagging and trunking. Well, there you go, different techniques for different scenarios. Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if I helped. And whether you're using secondary IP addresses or trunking with sub-interfaces, may those packets always reach their destination.